Hey, oh, welcome everyone to episode 86 of Today in the Scene. I'm Joe with the Indie Arcade Wave, and I just want to say thank you for checking us out. If you like what we're doing here at Indie Arcade Wave, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll just keep the interviews coming for you. So this week, we're going to dive into something a little bit different. We have talked about pinball in the past, but we've never talked to someone that actually produces pinball cabinets. So this week, we've got Jack from Jersey Jack's Pinball. Um, they have a bunch of awesome pinballs, and they look really unique compared to a lot of other stuff in the industry. So I guess without further ado, here's Jack. How you doing? Hey, Joe. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm glad we're able to get you on here and talk about your guys' cabinets because they do look very different than some of the other stuff in the industry. And I just wanted to know a little bit more about how Jersey Jacks came to be. Yeah, I mean, I guess you can just <laughs> kind of introduce yourself. Just let us know more more about you. So um, more than 30 years ago, I started repairing electromechanical pinball machines. Those are games that have, uh, where's my hand? Okay. Those are games that have the mechanical scroll wheels that go around and around, um, old school games. And then, um, and then I became a distributor. We started selling games to the home, uh, my company, pinballsales.com, and back around 2000, we started selling games to consumers. Believe it or not, they want pinball machines. So um, we sold them games. And then uh, about 2010, I was getting a little bored and it seemed like uh, technology was absent from new pinball machines. And I decided to start a company that would innovate, make fun products, make games that work and, and bring technology forward. So our games are truly 21st century innovations, very... Uh, Mechanical, very pleasing to the eye, and uh, playable artwork, a lot of fun games. Yeah, I was going over your guys' category, and you've got, I think, five or six games that are kind of on sale right now. Um, it looks like a lot of them are sold out, which is good news. Uh, I'm glad to see you guys are selling lots of games. Um, but I'm really curious about your your past. So you kind of mentioned that you started with like electromechanical uh repairs and stuff like that. But when did you actually get into pinball and what was it about pinball that hooked you and made you work in this industry for 30 plus years? So after I got out of high school, I was going to go to uh, a school for electrical engineering and I took six months and I decided to um, get a job. And as luck would have it, I, um, I answered an ad in the newspaper for a pinball mechanic and I was hired uh, some of the questions I was asked was, um, can you read a schematic and uh, do you know how to solder? So uh, it was pretty entry level for me as I um, did all that as a kid. I was always um, mechanically and electronically inclined. I uh, was on CB radio back in the day. I took an FCC license for a second class radio operator. I thought maybe I'd want to work at a radio station later on, something like that. So I knew electronic theory at that time. And uh, they opened up this big, my boss, his name was Heinz, and he was doing it for like 30 years before me when I just started. And he opened up this big box electromechanical pinball machine, and there were relays and wires and all kinds of motors and all kinds of stuff. And I kind of remember the day my mom left me in kindergarten and all the other kids were crying, and I said to myself, I'm not going to cry looking at that thing. It's not going to intimidate me. And uh, we dove in. And my first day at work, really, we went around to different college locations in the New York metropolitan area. And when it was 5 o'clock, my boss said to me, okay, I'll take you to the train station and meet you tomorrow. You'll get your car and all that. And I said, no, you know, let's let's go. Where else are you going? And he he looked at me over the top of his glasses like he, he didn't understand what I was saying. I was saying, let's go. Let's go to the next location and let's go fix games. I want to learn. And um, when I got the job, there were two other people repairing pinball machines. And after about six or eight months, there was only me and Heinz. They got rid of the other two people because I caught on pretty quickly because I loved it. I was very passionate about making games work. That's, I mean, that's a pretty cool way to just jump right into it. And I mean, really learn from scratch. You didn't, you had like, you had an idea of how the electronics worked, but you didn't actually know too much about pinball right off the bat. Yeah, no. 
So I wasn't a kid. I wasn't a kid that hung out at the candy store at the corner or played pinball and I knew pinball. I never, you know, if we went away for uh, the summer and we went to a hotel somewhere upstate New York or something like that, I put nickels or dimes or whatever it was into a pinball machine and just flipped the flippers and I, I had no clue, no clue at all. <laughs> Have you gotten better at pinball since then? Yeah, significantly. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope so. Um, so how did you go from working in the pinball space to actually starting your own business? What, what, what pushed you over the edge where you're like, I just want to do this on my own? So, um, you know, again, it was never, um, I'm looking at myself, one of my eyes is smaller. This eye, I, today I was working in the yard and I rubbed my eye. I got pollen in my eyes. So it looked like, holy cow, what's going on? But, you know. It's springtime in New Jersey. Welcome to springtime in New Jersey. Everybody's um, got allergies right now. Oh, my goodness. I don't even get it. When it's really high uh, count, I get it. Um, so anyway, I, I, I was repairing games, and, and that, was, that was pretty good. You know, I had a beeper, and I had a car they gave me, and I was going to all these colleges, repairing games, driving through all the metropolitan New York, New Jersey, you know, area. And uh, it was okay. And then uh, there was a beach club in Brooklyn, the Brook Sun Swim Club. And as a kid, I was a lifeguard there. I was kind of small, but I was a pretty strong swimmer. And at a, a Brooklyn beach club with an Olympic, Olympic-sized swimming pool, you didn't get too many calls to jump off the lifeguard chair. But I passed all my Red Cross courses, and I, I was hired. So I knew the owner of the place, and one day he just called me up like, around this time of the year in early May and said, Jackie, you know, I know you're fixing pinball machines, but do you want to put the games at the, at the brook this year? The guy we have is retiring. And I said, yeah, sure. You know, and I called up the um, distributor I was dealing with, um, Mondial Distributing in New Jersey. And the next day they sent me a bunch of games and I called the guy that owned the company and I said, how do I pay you? And he says, well, Jackie, here's what you do. Everybody call me Jackie. Jackie, here's what you do. You um, you put the money aside. You don't need it. You have a job and you live in what you folks. So you don't have big expenses. Put the money on the side. And when you get the money to pay for the game, send us the money. That's very different as to how it would go today. Yeah. Well, that's how it went. So um, the beach club was a great location. It, it, it did very well, but it was only seasonal, you know. It, it was only until Labor Day. But before Labor Day, one of the other, um, a friend of a friend of a friend had uh, a coffee shop, and he wanted games, so I put games in there, and then a laundromat, and then a candy store, and then I found myself buying more and more games, and the first game I bought was a Bally Wizard pinball machine. It had like an Anne Margaret and, uh, uh, you know, uh, Roger Daltrey type of character on it. It wasn't really a licensed game. It was done in their image. And I think I still have the bill for it somewhere. I think it was like sixteen or $1,700 uh, years ago. And uh, I'm pretty sure today it's worth uh, more than that. Yeah, that's definitely a, a big one these days. So how did the, that's that's where it all started. You started mostly doing like coin operating stuff, kind of like right. putting it into coffee shops and things. So when did you move into actually producing your own pinballs? Well, it's a lot longer than that. You know, as it as it wound up, uh, as years went by, I went to work uh, while I had games on the route. I developed an amusement center in New Jersey where it was party, party type of amusement centers, 12,000 square feet. We used to do about 200 parties a month in a really good month. And then um, I went to work for Mondial Distributing. I became the general manager until they sold the business. So I got a taste for uh, distribution, met a lot of the manufacturers, uh, learned how that part of the business worked which was kind of important. And then around uh, the end of 1999, 
somebody just came in and wanted to buy my amusement center through a business broker. So I said, yeah, sure, let's sell it. So I sold it. And I had this idea to start a company that would sell games to the home. And uh, the people from Mondial helped me because they had a lot of connections to companies in Europe where they sold. They were the owners of Gottlieb Pinball Machine Company, which Premier Technology grew out of Gottlieb. So they sold games to European customers for many, many years. They went to Europe. They bought up a whole bunch of games for me, sold them to me. We brought them to the United States in early 2000. And we started shopping them and putting them on eBay and selling them to home customers. And pinballsales.com, the first year in 2000, it did um, $1.4 million in sales. It's a pretty good first year. So we're still not at where I um, – we're still not there. I'm getting there. So I realized that the supply of good-use pinball machines is pretty limited uh, in Europe. I was starting to get games uh, in containers that looked like they took a bath without a bathing suit. So they were all swollen, and people were selling us. They were telling us they were sending us really good games, and then they were substituting them. So I'd have to take, like, eight Popeye games – to get one Adams family, things like that, you know. So less desirable games you had to take more of to get more desirable games. It was getting dull. But really, I had no competition doing it, but the market was very small. And uh, I knew I needed to become a distributor for the only pinball company that was building games at the time, which was Stern Pinball. And long story short, I became a distributor for them we innovated a lot of different things during the years I was a distributor. We created limited edition games and signed games and games with different uh, cosmetic features about them, things like that. And around 2008, there was what they called the Great Recession, which, um, you know, <laughs> there's a lot going on now. I don't think we're heading there. but And um, things slowed down, but this disposable income was still there. And around 2010, I decided, let's innovate. Let's make a pinball machine uh, that has new technology in it instead of just a static back glass on the game. You know, it'll have uh, LED lights. So let's take a little walk. I'm surprising you. So here's a Guns N' Roses game in my office. I mean, this is, this is an amazing piece of equipment. Uh, it's amazing fun. Um, this is not what I would say, this is not your grandfather's pinball machine. So this is, um, this is what we created. This was our sixth game, uh, in the line. The first game we did was Wizard of Oz. The second was The Hobbit. The third was Dialed In. Uh, the fourth was Pirates of the Caribbean. Then we did Willy Wonka and we did Guns N' Roses. And maybe in the next few weeks, we'll introduce game number seven. So that'll be really cool. That's awesome. I mean, I'm, I'm glad to see all those different games you guys made, kind of how it all came together. Um, working with Stern, I mean, you're right. They're a massive name in the industry. Um, I just got to play a whole bunch of their games the other weekend in Milwaukee. And you guys really stand out with your, your screens and all the LEDs you have in there. Um, and I think that's such a cool part of your guys's cabinets, but I guess I'd rather hear it from you. What is it really that sets you guys apart from other producers in the industry? Well, you know, a lot of companies talk about passion and what their people put into things that they make, whether it's a cake or whether it's a bagel, or whether it's, you know, a shirt or a pen or whatever it is. We have people in the company that literally eat, sleep, breathe, dream, create pinball. And they design things for themselves. They're players, they're collectors, they're, some of them are casual, some of them are just uh, complete fanatics. And, you know, other people make good pinball machines and I love them, but we try to make great pinball machines. Uh, we make games that people want to keep and want to collect. Uh, you rarely find our games on the secondary market. Uh, typically, when you do find them on the secondary market, they're 
a lot more expensive than they were when they first came out. So the collective base of uh, all people is growing. There are more and more shows around the world. There are more and more tournaments. There are more and more locations commercially opening. More and more people want to buy games from the home. I mean, you know, I have customers, obviously, from 20 years. And they become friends. A lot of them become friends and selling games to their kids. And you watch them grow up. And uh, it's just a special connection. You know, pinball is a skill game. It's a mechanical game. You can get better if you practice. Video games are great. I love a lot of really great video games. I grew up on video games. I mean, all the way from, you know, back, back wheels and sprint and million video games. But, you know, when you get good at it, you know, I know the 23rd shot on Space Invaders, the little spaceship is going to come out and I'm going to be able to hit that on the 23rd shot. You know, I know when this, I know when the PT boat is coming out on Seawolf and I know you know, a lot of other things on a lot of other games, too. So when you get good at it, you get good at it and you master it and you get to the end of it. But pinball, there's a few things for sure in life. Uh, I guess as they say death and taxes, but your ball is going to drain. So your battle is you're battling with the machine and the machine is this um, kinetic device that's sometimes trying to destroy itself in a way with a metal ball bouncing into rubber and plastic and wood. And, and and other metal so uh, it, it's it's a crazy contraption of um of fun it really is it's there's nothing like it really i love that i just i love to hear like all the passion from you and how long you've been doing it and I, that's just it's awesome to me as someone who's just kind of getting into this industry been in a couple of years now like making our own indie games it's it's really cool to see people that have been doing it for so long that still love doing it. It gives me hope to like really, really enjoy this for the future. Well, have a lot um, of hope. You know, the world, the world really needs more fun. You know, in a in a real interesting way. Uh, when we went through COVID, um, I was saying to myself, "Gee, you know, I wish we made masks or I wish we made uh, different equipment that could help people." And then I I quickly realized we make equipment that help people because. A lot of people were shut in their homes and they couldn't go anywhere and they were stressed out and they, and they were, they turned to their pinball machines. Really, they did. Truly, they did. Um, to relieve stress and to have fun and to cocoon uh, with their loved ones uh, or even by themselves uh, in some cases. And we communicated with people all over the world uh, through uh, the love of their pinball machines. So. It did serve. It did serve a very important purpose during COVID. You know, obviously the commercial locations got killed, but they're coming back for the most part now. People are out there with vengeance. They want to get out. They want to play, which is great. So if you, Joe, if you can be part of something that brings more smiles to people in the world, brings more people together, brings more fun, I think that's a pretty noble thing to do in a lot of ways. I'm very humbled about what we do. And I know we're not curing, uh, you know, great diseases, but we are curing a lot of things that you may not realize. And uh, mental health is important. And a lot of people have told me that pinball machines help them get through a lot of different situations with their, with their physical health and their mental health. So um, it's just a lot of fun to play a game. Yeah, I love that. I mean, you're, you're so right. It, it It's all about fun. Like, if you can't have fun, then you're having an issue being happy. If you're not happy, then you're not healthy. And right. it, yeah. They go hand in right. hand. So um, that's really all I had for you, Jack. So I guess you can just shout out any kind of social medias or anywhere that people can check you guys out. Well, you can follow us on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter. Um, uh, go Elon Musk. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a fan. Free speech and all that good stuff. Um We'll be announcing a new game, you know, in coming weeks. So uh, stay tuned for that. That'll be very exciting. And maybe uh, I'll get a chance to come back and visit with you and talk about that at some point in the future. Yeah, I'd love to talk about a new release. That'd be really cool. Um, but yeah, thanks for coming on, Jack. It's been awesome chatting with you, hearing your story, learning about how you guys are making pinballs. And for anybody that's still watching, if you like what we're doing here at Indie Arcade Wave, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, peace. Oh,